Come on, good morning. Are you here? All right, uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, we have started a little bit late, but uh, it's all right. We can, uh, we can just go ahead with the program. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, uh, those who are here present. Uh, we would like to now start our program, and I would like to introduce, uh, I would like to just introduce our resource person here today. And we have uh, some very experienced people uh, here today with us. Uh, those who are working in the real life scenario cases, police cases, the crime, uh, cyber crime cases. So they are the ones who are going to do a presentation. So I believe and I hope that we all will learn something because that's a college is one of the most updated college in terms of IT infrastructure, in, in, in terms of the IT, IT usage. So uh, we all are now part of uh, this network where this security has become a very important issue. All right, so we have been receiving some phishing emails. We have been, a lot of phishing cases were there, even in our college network. But I think through this kind of experience, uh, workshop, we'll be learning how to avoid, how to be secure ourselves with this technology as well. All right, so before uh, I jump into other program, let's introduce our resource person here today. So first we have um, our Sir Moriman Ba Amer. Joint Director, Scientist D. Nelit Koimap. Thank yes. you so much, sir. He's, uh, he's uh, the, uh, experienced, well experienced with all the project implementations in Nelit Koima, the cashless transaction. You know, uh, he, he has been experienced in so many uh, central government related projects. So it's very good to have him, sir. Thank you so much for availing your time. And the next we have uh, Mr. Atoshi Lohe, our Forensic analyst, he is a forensic analyst, and be careful of this guy. This guy is also an ethical hacker. All right, so this guy should be the care. Uh, you, you have to be careful of this guy. All right, he is the person who almost deals with all the cybercrime cases in Nagaland, not only Nagaland but Assam, Manipur, and our some several northeastern uh, police cases. All right, so thank you so much, sir, for giving us your time here, and. We have one more person, our uh, Sir Tanil Maran, additional director, and he is one of the tech guy. Give him any, 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 anything related to technology, he is the one who will solve it. <laughs> so he is the Mr. Tech guy in the, in the NELIT, and thank you so much, sir, for, for everyone, uh, who are, for all of you, for coming here and availing your time and giving us this workshop, much needed workshop to each one of us. I would like to... Uh, uh, we have a uh, student council. I would like to thank our, just I think after that I won't stand, so I'll just take this privilege. I would like to thank our director, principal, all the HOTs who are present here. Thank you so much for uh, attending and giving us this privilege also to uh, conduct this workshop with this NELID. So thank you so much to the administration as well for the support. And thank you so much the HOTs for present here, a student council as well. Thank you so much. And uh, now... Uh, I give time to our director for a welcome address. Thank you, Tali, for the welcome and the introduction, and thank you, Neelit, for being here today. So it is, a, you know, it is an absolute pleasure to be conducting this program today in collaboration with Neelit. I think uh, for all of you, you receive a lot of mails from me but in case you receive a mail where I'm asking money from you, I have not received it, <laughs> okay? This is not about your fees or anything like that, but then I have seen quite a number of uh, mails which are allegedly sent by me asking for money. So just straight up, I want you all to know that if I ever need money from you, I will personally call you or I'll ask you in person. Don't believe everything you read uh, in your emails unless you verify that it's from that tetsocollege.org. Okay, so I mean, uh, phishing has been going on not just in my name, but in our principal's name. And then I've just come to know after some discussion, even the DC Chumogadima and all these high profile people. Phishing, um, and I mean, cybersecurity is probably something that is so important. So we're so grateful that uh, Neelit 
is conducting this program and they've chosen Tetsuo College uh, for this. But at the same time, I would uh, like to also express how um, in some ways proud I am of our Department of Computer Science and to all the teachers and all you students regarding where we are right now. Tetsuo College has come such a long way from when we first introduced computers to the teachers and the office staff. All the way maybe, I think it was before two, in the year 2000, our office started using computers. Then in 2010, we probably, start, we probably gave the first computer and it started with one computer to the teaching staff. Even now, I know there are many institutions where teachers don't have computer systems. From one, one computer, it, uh, we increased it to four because we didn't have the budget. And all the teachers took turns and were using four computers. You know, that was all the way in 2010. And during this time, we were probably one of the first institutions also to have our own website. Then we were also probably one of the first institutions to get into social media. And this, this uh, journey actually has been so interesting because uh, I come from a generation that was using cassette players where the cassette players, the songs you're listening, you'll have to press, rewind, forward. I don't know whether you know what I'm talking about here. I come from a generation where if you say we will meet at 4 o'clock means you will meet at 4 o'clock or you will not see them because there were no cell phones. It was all landline. So if you're not meeting at that time you specified, that's it. And maybe if you don't know them, you'll have to mention what clothes you're wearing and everything as well. So that's how we recognize each other, you know, those days. So imagine dating, you know, during that time. <laughs> the whole family will have one phone and the children are probably hogging the phone all the time, right? So phone calls can be received. So we've come from that generation where it started like that. And then, I mean, I, I think um, for all of us, uh, I don't know, one, one of our NELIT members was my classmate. Also, I just found out, you know, so it was, it's great, you know, to, to connect with that. But I, for our generation, it was like that. Um, we have seen when social media did not exist to what it is right now. Something called uh, classmates.com. I don't know whether you've heard of uh, High Five. Then from there, it went to Orkut. And... It was just picking up from Orkut, you know, I, you had all this MySpace coming up, then you had other things like, um, then slowly Facebook came up. And it became so popular because there were games and things. Then from, you know, I, and from that time, that's when we started getting into the, on, you know, the social media space. We, we, were, we were already on websites and things like that. And then the other things just exploded from Facebook Instagram started, became a new thing. I mean, Twitter was there even before that again. But I mean, all these things. And then there are just so many things like that that now we're talking about a metaverse. Uh, I mean, it's uh, so exciting to be alive right now, in my opinion, to be seeing this transition in technology and also to be able to see different generations and see how you're adapting to it. The way you guys our handling technology is completely different from the way we do it. But the ease with which you're using your devices and how connected you are and the value with which you give to, say, Instagram likes and popularity online, it's a completely different culture that's coming up. And with all of this, of course, these positive things, there are also so many dangers that are coming which we're still trying to navigate. So, you know, I think um, 
what what we're hoping to gain from this program and also what we're hoping to gain from this relationship is something that is just starting. Hopefully, uh, we are in initial discussions and we'll be making an announcement very soon, maybe where uh, the relationship between Nilet and Tetsu College will be strengthened further into a way that will benefit every single student in the college and also improve your skills in IT and hopefully you know from from this uh, program we will be able to expand our horizons and also give you another professional certification and uh, announce larger things in the coming days so um, with that you know I just like to encourage all of you to listen but most important to ask questions and feel free also to bring up actual uh, situations maybe you faced um, with our experts here right now and uh, with that I wish you all the best and thank you so much for coming wish you um, I wish I, I congratulate our computer science department as well for uh, bringing about this program and we hope for a stronger relationship and uh, a strengthened you know and a very bright uh, future for everyone sitting here and who will benefit from this thank you thank you very much yeah thank you so much sir uh, now uh, it's the time we will give to our resource person so just uh, advice if you want you can take a note you can take out your mobile phone, take a notes, but don't play games. All right, it will be helpful. I will tell you this will be really helpful for your uh, whenever you use your mobile phone or your uh, internet. So you can take notes, and after the session, after the session, you can uh, you can raise a question. We'll have a session, question answer session. So if you have any question, like our director mentioned. Uh, any related, any cyber related cases you have uh, come across or maybe you yourself have faced, maybe you can raise a question and you can clear your thoughts even from them. So uh, now I give the time to our Nelit Kohima. Thank you, uh, respected chairperson, Sir Tali, who has been uh, an ex-faculty of our Nailit Kohima, thank you very much once again, and respected director, principal, uh, various HODs, and my dear students. Uh, it is a very, indeed, a very uh, auspicious day, I should say, that we are conducting this cybersecurity awareness program here at Tetsuo College today. We have uh, been running such programs at different locations in different districts of Nagaland, and I think in the whole of Dimapur or Chumukitima districts, this is the first college that uh, this kind of uh, session is going to be held. So I'm very happy and also proud. And like our director has said, we are in the process of, you know, entering into an MOU where uh, the relationship between Nailit and Tetsuo College will be further strengthened through various uh, development activities, I should say so. Uh, before we start with our session on this cybersecurity, I would like to uh, highlight some very uh, brief uh, information regarding the NILIT. As you are aware that NILIT is the, the full form of NILIT is National Institute of Electronics and Information Technology. It is under the Ministry of Electronics and IT, Government of India. Now in Nagaland, we have three centers. One that is in Kohima, that is the head office. We have one in Chuchuyimlang that is in Mohokchung district. And we have uh, recently, in this year, we have set up another extension center at Dimapur. So these three centers are catering to the needs of different people in these various different districts. Now, regarding the infrastructures, uh, Nailit Kohima, I think it has, it has one of the best infrastructures when we compare it with IT facilities. So. We are also the implementing agency of the ministry. And under Nalit Kohima, we are implementing various projects. And 
the government of Nagaland has declared Nailit Kohima as a center of excellence also. So these are some of the things, right? And now in, to collaborate with one of the you know, fastest growing college in Nagaland, that is the Tetsuo College, we are also very excited about it. So we, I'm sure that this bonding is going to you know, benefit the students at large. And today morning only, we were having discussion regarding the various courses that our Naga people are undertaking in various colleges. Now, once you graduate from your colleges, uh, many times it happens that you may not be, you know, employable to a particular company, okay? You are not, you know, well prepared in order to enter the field of employability. This is what we are discussing. So what you require is you need a different set of skilling. So different set of skilling is required. Now, for example, uh, there are various uh, emerging technologies that is coming out. Like we have cybersecurity. Now, when we talk of cybersecurity, in whole of Northeast, as well as in compared with India also, Nailit Kohima has the best infrastructures when it comes to cybersecurity. And I think their forensic department is one of the best. We, uh, Nailit Kohima is, you know, not only solving cases of uh, within Nagaland, but even from outside the states, people are bringing the cases in order to solve, you know, different cyber-related crimes. I think uh, Sir Atoshi is here, the ethical hacker guy, okay. He is the guy who is handling all of this, so he is going to elaborate more during his session also. And we also have this Internet of Things, IoT. I think you must have heard of it. Now, irrespective of whether you are an art student, commerce student, or as you know, computer students, you all are using social media, right? Right. It's not that only if you are, you know, undergoing computer classes, you should use computer. It's not like that, right? So when we talk about IoT also, it is like that only. So everyone, each and every individual is going to be affected by this IoT. So we need to be aware of these kind of technologies. And we have artificial intelligence. Now we have, you know, the driverless car, that is the Tesla car, I'm think, I think all of you are aware of it. So these things are happening, okay. And also I think uh, your college is also having 3D printing also. No, okay, actually I follow your social media handle, okay. So I think somewhere I saw or I don't know whether it may be, it may be different. So in Nailit Kohima is also, okay, the culprit is out there. Anyway, let's continue. Uh, I won't take long. So Nailit Koema is also this uh, 3D printing facilities are there. Okay, we have recently purchased uh, one 3D printing machine and more are in the process. Three more we are going to purchase more in the, within this, uh, maybe by next financial year. So all these trainings, okay, once you know, once you come out of your, you know, college, without these skills, it may be difficult to, you know, survive, especially when you are seeking employment. Okay, so these skillings are very necessary. And today, we are very happy that, you know, these facilities can be conducted in collaboration with your college also. So I, whether it be IoT, blockchain, okay, or 3D printing also, these such type of, you know, the needed courses can be conducted in your colleges. So I think with this, uh, I'll just stop for some time. I'll come back later, okay, in the second session also. Uh, thank you very much. And I hope that this session will really benefit you. And also, in the end, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. Okay, I'm going to ask you a lot of questions. Uh, because why I'm saying this, uh, we have been visiting many districts. We have been to Kefri, we have been to Peren, not only once, twice. Okay, we have been to Woka and other districts also like Mogokchong. Okay, forget about Dimapur and Kohima. So there we have seen that a lot of uh, cyber crimes are taking place even in the other districts also. So definitely, you yourself must have faced also. So I'm, I have a lot of questions with me. Okay, so I'm going to ask them. But before that, I'll give chance to you in, for you to ask some questions. So if there's no question from your side, there's a lot of, you know, AK-47 type of questions from, from our side. So you just be ready, okay? So now I give time to my colleague to start this session. Thank you very much. Yeah, good morning everyone. Uh, while we are fixing the laptop, uh, let me just start. 
That is, uh, today we are here to talk about uh, cybersecurity and while going through different colleges, different places and interacting with different uh, age group, people of different age group. Okay. So while doing so, what we, what we have seen is at the end of the day, whatever thing it may be, it becomes the sole responsibility of an individual. At the end of the day, it's that. Okay, so we are conducting this program just to give you an awareness, to tell you that try to stay safe. Okay, there are different crimes, and then there are different crimes that is happening. And then uh, if we see, then everything we load into Huishi, into Huishi, so many things comes up. And then after that, when we try to discuss and all, then try to find it out, then individuals' responsibility, individuals' carelessness, okay, most of the time it happens. Now, if we think over, then we are so much, okay, today we will be, we are, we are so much dependent on information these days, okay. I still remember when I was a kid visiting the grandparents' place, okay. During the time, after reaching the village, our grandparents and all won't be there at home. So when we reach, the door is all kept open. We enter into the house, we make tea, and then um, by evening and all, the aunt and all, or the grandparents and all, they used to come back from the field. Now, it was e easy for us to get into our grandparents' home, even though if they were not there. Okay. They kept the door open, and then they went. Nowadays, some of us, we may be staying in a hostel. While we are staying in a hostel, okay, what do we do? We try to lock our door and then go wherever we go. At times, uh, even going to a washroom, we may have to lock the door and go, right? But those days, if we think properly, then their doors were kept open and we could enter, we could make tea, or we could cook food for them also. And then after that, by the time we finish cooking, they will be coming back. These things happen just because for them, they, don't, they didn't have any fear that, okay, I'll be losing this, I'll be losing that. These days, we have a fear. We have so many things in our room. Maybe our room will be too small, but then that smallest room also, we try to lock and then go. Why? Because we have so many things, valuable things are there, and then we have so many uh, things kept where we are afraid that our friends and all, or some person may come and steal and then go. Similar thing is with this, Cybersecurity, if we think over, we are so much dependent on internet. We are so much dependent on technology that now we have to stay secured. Okay. Our traditional way of committing crime, if we think over, then it was committed in the crime scene. Traditional way of committing crime is crime was committed in the crime scene. Right. Suppose uh, going and looting a bank. A person will go, who knows, he may be, uh, according to our imagination, according to the movies that we see, going and looting a bank, if we think of it, then they will be wearing a, a, wearing a mask with the eye open and then uh, only this part is open and then they'll be entering and then after that, they'll be asking for cash, right in the cash counter. And then if unlucky enough, they may even pull the trigger. That was the thing. But nowadays, you don't have to worry about that. You can peacefully sit over here, over this particular program itself. You may sit over and then tell that you are attending this particular cyber forensic awareness program. And at the same time, you are looting somebody, somebody's uh, bank. You may loot a complete Swiss bank also, who knows, by sitting over here, right? So it's all about our information. Earlier, 
information point of view, nothing much was uh, worried about. But then these days, uh, this is very important. Last week only, I had a uh, parents-teacher interaction for my daughter. And a day before that, uh, I got a call from some person and then they were telling me like, okay, am I calling to Mr. Muri? And then I said, okay, yes. And then after your daughter's name is this and then studying in this particular school, in this particular standard. Then I said, okay, yes, that is correct. And they were asking me about uh, conducting some tuitions and all. Okay, so straight away uh, I said no, and then after that, uh, while having that parents teachers interaction, I just informed the school's authority also, kindly don't share our details to anyone. Because these days, information is all what somebody need to ruin someone else. So giving away personal information is very important. So coming to our, this one, cybersecurity, if we see. Cybersecurity is, a, if we think about then, how do we secure ourselves? Okay, how do we secure ourselves? And then after that, it is dealing with securing your, keeping your, daily phones that you are using, right? Uh, securing your computers, right? And then after that, any other gadgets that use uh, network, okay? So any technical uh, gadgets that you use, anything or anything related to network, all those things, and how do we keep ourselves secure? That is the thing that we are going to discuss today. Now. Like as I've said, we are so much dependent on internet these days. Usually the same thing I used to tell that uh, these days, as soon as we get up, okay, instead of uh, saying a word of prayer, thanking God, what we usually do? Search for the phone, na? Satyan or message kuno photaishina photanai. Or that particular person have posted something in the Insta or not. Right? Just even in our deep sleep, subconscious mind, that is there now. Before you get up, in your subconscious mind, you have something about uh, things that we are doing in the internet, things that we are dependent on internet. Okay. Now, if we say, who knows? You are seated over here and then acting like you are listening to me and then you may be chatting with someone else right some of you you may be doing that so we depend so much even on the technology even for communication that is you want to talk you want to express something there are many ways that we can communicate these days not just over the call but then uh, by different ways we can uh, communicate and then we can use the technology. So in this way, what happened? We are so much dependent. Okay, it's, I'm not saying that uh, being dependent is not good. Okay, but we are totally into this technology that we cannot live without it. This is the thing that is happening. And in fact, uh, it's a, I should say COVID have brought a lot of changes. And one good change is that uh, COVID have brought us is use of this technology. Okay. Now, even if we miss some of the classes and all at times, okay, we may even call you for online classes and all. If the teacher wants to complete his or her particular course and then after that he is not able to take the classes and all, Okay, with some of the other courses, problems. Okay, still what we can do? We can communicate with you through some means of uh, chat, through some means of groups. Then after that, we may call you and then we may uh, organize the class as well, right? So likewise, when it comes to communication, still we are totally into that. Now, if we talk about the banking sector, Everything is online. 
Everything is online now. Okay. Just uh, before the session started, a call came from our this one, uh, Kohima Municipal Council. Okay, we had some work done um, by them, and then we have to clear their dues and all. So we were tell, uh, just now over the phone. I was just telling that only. Okay, that uh, this will be the means where we will be transferring the money and all to your organization. So you see, it becomes very easy. Right, uh, and then select somebody's waiting. You want you won't be able to attend, but then you call over the phone and then say, "Okay, kindly uh, give that I'll GPA you." Right? I think that is the term that we usually use these days. GPA kuri DB. Right? So GPA is not the only thing, but then when it comes to banking sector, also everything is online. It has become, it has made our life so easy. When it comes to uh, recharge of your TVs and all also, it's very easy. Your phone, very easy. You don't have to stand, go to the shop, wait for your turn, and then after that pay and then do that, this and that. Everything, transactions that we do, it's totally uh, online only. Okay. So, if we think there are again lots of online services and then in fact our college is also one that's a college is also one where they have a lot of uh, services and all okay uh, your, our director was also even telling like uh, you have your hr which is uh, there in the cloud those uh, softwares and all they are you are using so lots of softwares and all so even your biometric attendance and all right what are these? These are all services that we are depending on. Okay. So there are a lot of services that we use, and even if we don't want to use, uh, it has come, it has become mandatory for us also, in one way or the other, to be tech savvy. It has uh, automatically situation has brought us to get into this. Okay. Like uh, let me just give another example. While we were small, parents and all used to tell us, you talk, you talk. Nah? You go to some auntie's house, uncle's house. Come on, you speak something. Right? That was told to us since we were keeping quiet. Nowadays, if you don't have money, if you don't have money, then you are not able to talk. You have to recharge. Yes or no? So even for talking, we depend now, right? So if we see, we are forced to, even if we, whether we want or not, still we are forced to get into this technology world. And then who knows, uh, in the near future, we may be totally, uh, so this, uh, we may, yeah, totally into technology that, who knows, the Thing that we are speaking, we may speak in zeros and ones also. Who knows? We don't know, right? Okay. Now another thing that we see is relationship, right? There are there are a lot of relationships that comes up through use of technology, right? There are a lot of cases, and then uh, even like uh, there are different uh, cases which has been referred by police also, which is related to relationships and all. Okay, there are so many cases and all. So there are pros and cons for all these things. And now, when it comes to search, okay, for me, I will tell you, searching has become part of my life. Okay, there's not even a single day where I haven't searched something in Google, where I haven't searched something in YouTube, where I haven't searched something in Spotify or whatever, whatever things that we do. There's not a single day. Your assignment, who knows, you may be searching in the internet and then you may be writing those assignments and all which is given to you. Right? So, can anybody of you Tell me that you haven't searched anything from yesterday up to now. 
I think uh, many of us would agree to me that you will be searching at least something in the whole day, you will be searching at least something, right? Whatever things that we do. In fact, uh, it's just an, uh, it's just according to me, okay? Who knows, uh, instead of Google search, YouTube search may be more. Because again, we are too much into technology that you want to learn how to unscrew this tripod that you see. If you just search in the Google, they'll give you in return, step by step. We don't want to read that also. So YouTube to China, we will be seeing the visual thing and then we will be doing, right? So likewise, whatever things that you do, we depend on internet only. We depend on different technologies that we are using. So, basing on the use of technology, it has become necessary for every one of us to stay secure because you cannot say that, no, I'm out of this. I cannot be with the technology. You cannot say that, okay? So, when you talk, you're using some devices, okay? You're moving around, people will get to know where you're moving around even. Uh, and then <coughs> people may even people may even be able to trace you where you are. Okay, now the phones that you are using, okay, the gadgets that you are using, if you don't use it properly, then it is going to cause problem to you. It is going to create a lot of problems to you, the things that we use. Let me give an example of one of the cases. That is, a person was kidnapped, and then after that, ransom was asked to the parents, and then after that, uh, photo was clicked and then sent to the parents. Okay. Now, that particular photo the parents received and then that photo was uh, given to the police. Then after that, unluckily, the person who took the photo, they, they didn't know that. The person who kidnapped their child, they didn't know uh, about the facility that was there in their camera. Okay, so they clicked the photo and then they sent. After sending, what happened was that, uh, unluckily, geotech was on. Okay, police and all, they saw, they knew the geolocation, straight away went there and then caught all of them. You see, using the devices without knowing the facility that is there. Now, we are so much into using good, uh, good, good uh, phones, devices and all. If we don't know the purpose of all those things and all, what we are using, why do we use this? Okay, it is going to land, it is going to bring us into trouble. Okay, so you see, we have to know what we are using, we have to know what we are doing, and at the end of the day, we must stay ourselves secured. We must stay ourselves secured. That is, as I've said in the beginning, our information has become so important to us. If in case the personal information that you are using, okay, is been known by someone else. Like the example that I've given you, somebody calling me and then telling my name, my daughter's name, and then after that, which class she is studying, all those things and all. This is very dangerous. Okay, so keeping our information private is very important. Knowing the device that you are using is very important. Okay, let us see the uh, cybercrime rate for the last five years. Okay. If we see that in 2017, in India, there were 21,796 cybercrime that was registered. Okay, and then after that, if we see in 2018, it has increased to 27,248. And if we see in 2019, 
it has increased to 44,546. And if we see in this one, 20, 50,000, and then 21, it's 52,000. Now these are the registered cases. Just imagine how many unregistered cases are still there. Crime has been committed, but the thing is that uh, those crimes which has been committed is not been reported due to one or the other reason. Okay. So this uh, crime rates, if you see, it's increasing day by day. It's increasing day by day. Now, what is cybercrime? Cybercrime is nothing but a crime which has been committed after using the different types of technology. Okay, different types of technology, maybe your phone or maybe networks or so. Now, let us see what are the different cyber crimes that are there. Okay, let us try to see what are the different cyber crimes that are there. First of all, identity theft. Uh, our director was uh, mentioning about asking money, emails being received, right? So those are what? A mail might have been sent by someone else using your director's name and then after that send, uh, sending request for sending money, right? That means he is stealing the identity of a principal. In one of the college, uh, the identity theft that, was, that has happened to us, tomorrow there is exam, okay? Now what they have done is, they have used the identity of the principal and then came out with the official notice that tomorrow is holiday. It has created a chaos to that particular college. It's one of the college up there in Kohima. Okay, and that's a very uh, good college, a big college, not a small one. Okay, so you see, somebody else trying to take the identity of someone. Okay, that we call it as identity theft. Now, if we try to imagine about identity theft, then <coughs> There are a lot of uh, things that are happening when it comes to identity theft. Okay. I will just narrate a story about a person who's, who applied for a bank loan. Okay. He applied for a bank loan. Then after that, uh, once he applied, he went to the bank and then discussed with the bank manager and then came back. Okay. Now later on, a call came, a call came from the bank telling that, okay, you have applied for this, this uh, amount of a uh, loan. Then he was surprised to hear the amount because the actual loan that he applied was uh, lesser than the amount that has been quoted by the manager. Then after that, what happened? He went to the bank and then after that, later on, came to know that uh, somebody have taken all the records, all the documents that were submitted and then after that, after that, uh, under that particular same name, okay, the loan was applied, okay. And then after that, the amount was increased and then the account number was somebody else. Okay, so what happened? The person, he just took over the documents and then tried to steal the identity of that particular person, the first person who applied for loan. Now these things happen just because of the documents that we usually neglect. Okay. You may scan your documents and then you go to a cyber cafe, scan your documents. This is my mark sheet. It is scan to my scholarship upload You will be scanning and then you will be keeping it. You will be keeping the documents there in that particular PC. You will not dare to this one delete that. Right? So actually that happened in a Xerox uh, machine, uh, Xerox center, okay. That particular banking thing, it happened there in the Xerox center, where the documents that was given for Xerox copy, instead of one one copy, the person, he took out extra copy, the person who was sitting in the Xerox counter, he took ex extra copy and then one for himself and then the other for the customer. Okay, that is how he got hold of all the documents. Okay, so likewise, we have to be very careful. You go to a cyber cafe, you, do, you, go, you use your friend's uh, 
computer and all. Okay. We scan it, we share our documents and all. Be careful when you share your own documents. That will be misused by someone else. If they want to take the opportunity, they can do that. Okay, so that is it about uh, this one, stealing someone else's identity. When it comes to uh, asking of money and all, these days, there are a lot of cases where uh, pastors and all, usually what they do, they also have their social media accounts and then they don't, uh, all the different church workers and all, they may not be using much of the social medias and all. So these days what is happening? Uh, those people, they are keeping track of those people then after that coming up with a fake account similar to that uh, account because those people, they don't use much. Okay, so keeping that in mind, what they are doing. They're trying to come up with uh, this one, fake profile, and then after that, uh, asking for money, you know, those things are also happening. Okay, so, you see, those person, what are they doing? They are just stealing someone else's identity. It happened in our own uh, uh, institute as well, our own faculty. Okay, his account was also been, uh, fake account was created by someone and then after that asking for monies and all those was done for our own stuff. Okay, those things has happened. So we have to be very careful when we share our information. When we share our information. Somebody may be there, somebody is just finding a ways and means to steal your identity. Okay, now, if we talk about social engineering, okay, this is the easiest way of committing a crime where you don't need any technical uh, expertise. You don't need any technical things at all. Social engineering is just a way in which you will try to convince someone else. Trusting, trust factor. This is the thing that happens in your social engineering. Uh, wait, just wait. I couldn't put that uh, mess screenshot because just a few minutes back only I received that message. I'll just read out that particular message that was received. Uh, it is about social engineering. His, I mean, her account was compromised and how it happened. Let me just uh, send, uh, read out the message that was sent to her. It happened here in Dimapur only. Okay. So a person sent him, sent her a message and then let me read out the message. I was trying to log in my Instagram page on my new phone and they asked me to find someone to help me. Help me receive a link. Instagram gave me two friends suggestion and you are one of them. And the other person isn't online. Will you please help me to receive the link? Okay, so that was sent to her and then after that, uh, the reply that she gave was, how, how can I help you? Okay. And then they replied like, okay, the link will be sent to you, please. Don't click on the link. Okay, copy and then give a screenshot of it and send it to me. Okay, so I asked her like, how your account was compromised? Then this is how the um, compromising of her uh, Instagram account and then Facebook account, it happened. Okay, so the link came, she gave the link to them, they clicked the link and then OTP was asked. Because as for the message, it was like that other person, he was not able to log in and then Instagram and all Meta, they are sending a link to somebody else. So that they will verify and then uh, they will give the login details and all to, to him. So just trusting that person, he sent the link, but what happened was they could uh, get into 
her Instagram account by uh, clicking the link and sending the OTP. OTP also came to her, her phone only. Okay, so she shared the OTP to her, and then after that, her Instagram was compromised. Okay, now they had, they know the password, they know everything, so what they could, next step that they took was the person who compromised her Instagram details, what happened? She, uh, her account, that two factor authentication was enabled. Now it was not possible for the actual owner, for her to change even the password. Because that uh, two factor authentication was enabled by them. Okay, so she could not do anything. That means her complete Facebook and Instagram was compromised. She wouldn't be able to do anything because uh, the two-factor authentication code is known to them only. They were the one who enabled that. They know the code. They know how to change. They, they have known how to change the password and all, right? So at the end of the, she has to surrender all the accounts. And then the way that they were doing was. Okay, during the Instagram, they have the list, list of friends and all, right? So likewise, from their list, again, they were trying to attack one after the another. Okay, it, it is, uh, this particular thing, it happened just last week only. Okay, it, it happened just last week only. Uh, lucky, that, lucky for her that her friends and all were working in uh, Facebook and all, and with the help of them, they were able to close down that particular account. Okay. Had it been you and me, it will be difficult for us. And people will start using our, this one, Instagram account, they will be start using our Facebook account and then we don't know what may happen to us. Okay, so that is about the social engineering. In case of social engineering, it is nothing but the trust that you try to gain, first of all. And then after that, once you gain the trust, what happens is that you will be caught, you will be trapped, Okay, so if we think about this so, uh, social engineering, phishing is also one. Phishing is also one way where they try to keep or try to extract information from you. Phishing is similar to the way you go and catch fish. Okay, usually angling, right? So you put that, okay, go ahead bed and then you'll be waiting, right? The moment the fish comes up, you'll be pulling up, yes or no? So even in case of fishing, that is P-H-H-I-S-I-N-G, fishing, okay. So even in case of fishing, what happens is that those person, they wait for you to enter your user credentials. Okay, they wait for you to enter your user credentials and then after the, the moment you enter the username and password, then uh, those things will be compromised. Your username, password, all, and all will be known by them, and then they'll be using that. The very uh, most common thing about the phishing is many of you, you may be getting SMS. You may be getting uh, different links and all, telling you to enter the account details and all. Let me just read out uh, this one. I don't know whether I've deleted or not. Last time I tried to enter and then the app was very simple. Okay, sorry, uh, I have deleted that, okay. So during the message, they have given a link to verify your Yono app. I click that just to see, okay. Just to see and, and then I add a random number and all. I didn't give any of my actual information. But the thing is that they gave a link, they asked me to verify my Yono app, which is the SBI online banking app, right? So when I click the link, that Yono logo was there and then they were asking me about the login ID and then the credentials and all. 
password. So I just entered a random password and then random uh, login ID and then I click the submit button. Okay. Then after that a blank screen came up. Nothing was there. Okay. So this is how they are going to extract your details and all. Okay. It is not going to be you are not going to get into the Yono database, the SBA database, but that username and password that I have entered, they'll be using that to get inside the, uh, what is it, uh, our bank details and all. Let me give an example to the same thing. It happened to our own security. Something like this happened. Then after that, people started asking for the OTP. He started sharing. Some amount was deducted from the account. Another OTP was sent. Some amount was deducted. Later on, his whole account was <coughs> brought down. Okay. So these are the things that uh, happens in social engineering. It is just the trust that you and I built up. Now coming to digital frauds, <coughs> banking. Okay. Digital banking and all. Uh, in short, what I'll see is whatever apps that you are using, try to download from a legitimate place. Okay, try to download from a proper place where you are downloading the banking apps and all. We are totally dependent on um, banking. And then with respect to keeping of your password, okay, with respect to keeping of a strong password, try to remember your password, try to keep a very strong password where you can remember easily, okay but difficult for others to decipher whatever password that you have kept. And then after that, kindly don't uh, write down your password in your mobile phones. Don't write it down in your uh, notebook diaries and all. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> now after this, I think we have done up to here, right? Let us replace this H by X, uh, hash mark zero W and replace this A by at the red R E Y capital zero U. Okay, now this particular word that you see okay this particular thing that you see is nothing but how are you right what I have done I've just replaced that uh, H with the hash mark zero with uh, O right a with at at a rate so it's very easy for us to remember how are you right this particular sentence but then it's difficult for somebody to actually get this particular password Okay, so whenever you create a password, make sure that it is a combination of small letter and capital letter. Make sure that you're using your special characters. Make sure that you're using numbers. Okay, so combination of all these things will help you to create a very good and strong password. Okay, so yeah, we, when it comes to your banking things and all, make sure that you keep a very strong password and then uh, whatever password that you are using, okay, whatever password that you are using is kept to yourself and never keep the same password for different applications that you are using. You have your Facebook, you have your Gmail, you have your uh, bank accounts, whatever. Whatever password that you are using, you keep it differently for all the different apps and all. If you forget, don't worry, you have the option, forget password, okay? Make use of that efficiently. You have your social medias. Uh, during your social media, uh, we have to be very careful. Okay, like uh, cyber stalkings, people are stalking at you many a times. Okay, uh, we have to be careful with that. There are a lot of cases on uh, sympathy fraud, romance frauds, and all. So we have to be very careful. And the last thing that I would like to share is about the virus. Okay. Kindly, whatever things that you are downloading, whatever applications that you are downloading, you download it from a genuine place, okay? And don't try to uh, click any links and all that has been provided in your emails or maybe in your 
WhatsApp or whatever. Okay, until and unless you don't know that uh, who have sent and then from which uh, you don't know that particular source. Okay, until and unless you don't know that, you kindly don't click any of the links. And with respect to using of uh, virus and all, antivirus and all, it's not about uh, keeping a very good uh, antivirus, but what matters is your responsibility to update your system, update your antivirus every now and then, whenever page has been uploaded, whenever any uh, updates has been provided to you, kindly try to download and then install those things and all. Okay, uh, we have so many things to discuss, so now I give time to Sir Daniel to continue on whatever I have discussed, then after that followed by Atoshe. Okay, so uh, we will continue our talks and all. This won't be the end. We will continue and then after that, at the end of the day, like as Sir have mentioned, we will be having uh, question hours and all. So, how are you feeling now? Not good. Okay, shall we all stand once? Let's stand once. Okay. Okay, so like uh, 15 more minutes, 10 to 15 more minutes from my side. Okay. Okay, please sit, please sit. Thank you. Okay, see, why do we make security mistake? Most people think that, okay, uh, this kind of mistake may not happen to me. Okay, most people think that, okay, uh, security uh, mistake happens to only those people, okay, who are not very smart or something like that. Okay, many people think that this will not happen to me. And ultimately what happens is, finally one day, it, will, it comes to you in one shape or another shape. Now here, just a brief demonstration. You all know him, right? Right. So now, if Sir Tali comes, okay, walk into this room right now and offers you, okay, I'll stand here for the camera person. Okay, okay. If Sir Tali comes and offers you a glass of water, okay, and also imagine that this person walks in and offers you a glass of water. Whose glass of water will you take? That is the question. Will you accept? Tell me. Obviously, Sir Tali, right? So this is the normal concept. Or this is the, uh, I, I should say like this is the traditional way. Okay, this is what we used to do before. Okay? But the question is, were you checking the water or the person who offered you the water? Okay? So most of the time, we are looking at the person who is offering us the water. Now, what I want to bring out from here is, this water is the data or the information in the internet or in the cyber world. Now, for example, a message comes to you from your, maybe from, let's say, Sertali. Okay. Maybe a message comes to you from Sertali asking you for some money. What will you believe? Will you believe this, it from Sertali or will you check the message? Did Sertali ever message you before? You should ask yourself. Were you in communication with Sertali before through WhatsApp and other uh, messaging platforms? Most probably not, right? Because we usually don't uh, chat or we usually don't, you know, share stories with our professors or with our, the principals or our director. Okay, but normally this kind of messages will come from, you know, someone very well known to do. Okay, so here, like I said, the data or the message is the most important thing and you should focus on that, not on the person. Okay, now for example, like if a message comes from your director asking you to pay your fee to this particular account, what will you do? What will you do? You should look at the message. You should consider the message. Is this the way you have been paying fees before? This is the question you should ask. Is this the way you have been paying your fees? Yes or no? If the answer is no, then that means you should doubt the person. Okay? From where the message has come. Okay. 
uh, social engineering already explained here one OTP sharing fraud is there okay so what usually happens here is bank people usually will call you saying that your ATM card okay or yeah your ATM card or your YONO password is about to expire and in order to do that you have to share your banking details or sometimes it happens that like okay we see some you know uh, they will ask you, okay, your name is this, 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 you are now in Tetsu College, Chumugitima, right? But we see that someone is trying to take your money from your ATM from, let's say, Guwahati. Okay, someone is trying to withdraw money from your ATM, at, from your ATM card at Guwahati. Is this you? We are just trying to verify. Okay, this is how they will call you. So that time you will be either in college or maybe you will be somewhere else or usually it will happen to your parents. Okay, it usually happens to elder people. So that time what will happen here is, you know, there will be a panic strike. Okay, the person who received the call, he will think that, okay, someone is trying to steal my money. Okay, using this, my ATM, maybe, we, I don't know how, how they are trying, but I know that people have lost their money through ATMs and all. Okay, so someone is trying to withdraw my money. So then he will ask the person, okay, how, how am I going to do? Or, or what shall I do in order to be safe? Okay, in order to stop that person from withdrawing the money, what should I do? Then the bank manager will say that, okay, you don't worry. In order to do that, I'll try to, you know, block the card through the system. Okay, but in order to do that, I will need your ATM card details as well as your uh, CVV number. CVV number, you all know? Okay, so like that, slowly, slowly. It's just, it's not like someone just calls and asks, okay, come on, give me your ATM card. They won't say like that. They will come up with an excuse. And slowly, slowly, they will say, now in order to finalize the blockage of your ATM card, we need one OTP. Now this OTP will come to you, you please share that. Again, this OTP we used to normally share. Okay, that is how you will lose your money. And I think this is the process through which we purchase uh, items from the e-commerce website also, right? From Flipkart, Amazon, like that. We purchase like that only. So those people are also doing the same thing, okay? Just remember, bank people or no one will ever call you asking you for your card details or your account number or anything related with bank, okay? I used to say that Whenever we go to the bank, bank people, bank people hardly talk with us, right? The staff people. Then why should they waste their time calling us? Nah? They'll never call us. Okay. Okay. Many people are also interested in purchasing, you know, secondhand mobile phones, right? Or secondhand vehicles like that. So there's something called OLX or e-commerce platform. Okay. Normally they will post as, you know, retired army people or currently working as, you know, as an army officer or something like that in the army. So when they say army, there's an element of trust. Okay, there's an element of trust when they say it's from the army. So what will happen here is they will even show their identity card. Okay, this is my I card. I have one uh, vehicle to sell, a bike to sell. Now what happens when we think of army men? Okay, since they are from army, they, wouldn't, they might not have used that vehicle too many times. Right, it must be like a brand new. This is also the concept that comes to the mind. Okay, that's why people prefer these army people items. Okay, now once they give this ID card, actually that is the time when you should know that it is fake. Because I have learned that army people, they never share their ID card in the public. Okay, so once they share their ID card, it means it is fake. And also, until and unless you go and meet them, okay, never pay the money in advance because these people will be fake, okay? Actually, there's a long story, but I'm trying to cut it short, okay? Because of time. So, got it? So, never pay advance money. So, identity theft is there. Okay, fraud using fake social media account. How many of your uh, Insta or FB has been hacked? Anyone whose account has been hacked? Anyone? Anyone? No one? 
No one is there. I definitely feel that at least 20 to 30 people should be there. Okay? Because this is the trend. Okay? At least 20 to 30 people account must have been hacked from your college. Okay? So how, how that hacking is happening? Okay? And normally in technical terms, I used to tell that we should not call it hacking. Okay? Because what is hacking? Hacking is when someone, you know, with their computers, with those programming codes and all, okay, they will try to, you know, go bypass the server and from the server, from the database, they take out the password and, you know, use it for some criminal activity. That is hacking actually. But what is happening here is you are giving your username and password willingly to the fraud, fraud people, fraudsters. You are giving yourself your username and password very easily. How this is happening? Okay, I think uh, Sir Muri has already explained that. Okay, how you are giving your, for example, a message will come saying that, okay, your Instagram account is going to be deactivated or something like that. In order to do that, you please change your account. In order to change your account, you have to enter your previous password. Okay, so when you enter your previous password, matlab, it is the present password. Okay, and that is how they take your uh, account. Another thing here is, for example, a similar profile of target social media account is. So they will target someone. Okay, they will target someone, someone who has good number of followers. They will target that person and they will try to create a fake, another similar kind of account because I can find your photos everywhere, right? If I go to your Insta, I can get your picture. Can I download it? Yes or no? Can I download your photos? Can I use it? So I'll just download your photos and I'll just put, I'll just create another new Insta account with your profile picture. And then what I'll do is I'll send friends to all your friends, friend requests to all your friends, saying that, okay, my previous account has been hacked. This is what I will write, okay? My previous account has been hacked. Kindly accept this request. This is my latest new account. And we just accept it. We will just accept it. Even if out of 1,000 people, even if 300, 400 will accept, that's good enough for me. But I think around 700 to 800 will accept. Except 200 will not accept. Okay? And then after creating the first face profile this one account after some time i will target someone i will target some of your friends some of your friends friends someone who is not very close to you but is also in touch with you also and i'll keep on chatting with that person from time to time and after some time what i'll do is i will try to you know uh, ask money i will ask money from that person Okay, see, I'm in deep trouble now. I need some money. Can you kindly lend me 1,000 rupees? Okay, remember, I'm not only chatting with only single friend of yours. I'm chatting with around, out of 700, I'm chatting with around 500 friends of yours. Now, fr from 500 fr friends of yours, not all are very smart, right? There will be some dumb people also. So those dumb people will give me the money. This is my target. I am expecting around... 10 people to at least transfer me some 1,000 to 2,000 rupees. Okay? I'm just giving an example. This is how the fraudsters are doing. They are not targeting, you know, in terms of course at one time. They are just targeting small, small, small amount, depending on the capability. For example, since you're a student, I may ask only 500 also. Now, since I'm asking 500, I think you have the capability to do that. Right? Ah, 500 to what? Okay. But please return it in time. You may say that, which you're not going to get it, right? So this is how they do. Even for employees, okay? The same case with the employees also. Employees, I'll ask around 3,000, 4,000, okay? Because employees, they, they have their salary, you know? So they will be able to give me. So out of 1,000 people, even if around 10 to 20 people give me the money, then I'm rich by some amount without doing any efforts without doing much hard working also. Okay, this is how this works. Okay, this is an actual case from uh, the pastor case, okay, from uh, Tuli area, okay. So uh, this is, uh, I hope you can see that. 
So this is how the conversation starts. Hello, hi, how are you? Like that, blah, blah, blah. Okay. And this is what? Uh, which social media is this? Can you recognize? Messenger, right? So messenger matlab, I can create any Facebook profile, right? Yes or no? And then through messenger, can I chat with you? Right? So today also, I can create any account, okay? Pretending to be one of your college teacher and maybe keep on chatting with you also. So remember, the person is not important. Certainly is not important. Remember the water is important. The message, the information that is being shared is important here. So what is happening here is in the photo, in the profile picture, we call it profile picture, right? In the profile picture, it's the photo of the pastor with his family. Okay? So the other person is thinking that he is chatting with the pastor. But in fact, he's not the pastor. It's someone else who has created another account. Okay? So like this, like this. And then the money was transferred. Okay? And after that, see, even it came to Facebook also. See, chatting, chatting through WhatsApp Messenger, what the pastor did was, the fake pastor, what the fake pastor, or the fraud, I should say, nah, the fraudsters, what he did was, he gave another phone number, WhatsApp number, okay, saying that it is my phone number, you take this. And then they started chatting in on WhatsApp also. Remember, this doesn't happen within one or two days, okay? They take time. Aste, aste. Maybe one week, two weeks, three weeks, like that. And in the end, okay, they will ask for the money. They will say, that, okay, see, I just came to Dimapur and then sat, uh, with my wife and my son or daughter and we had an accident, okay? And now I'm in the hospital. I'm not able to receive any calls, okay? And my wife is also in another, uh, in another room in the hospital and I'm here. We urgently need money, but here one good Samaritan, Okay, one, this is the story that the fake pastor is saying, okay? One good Samaritan has helped us a lot, okay? And this is his account number. Can you kindly transfer 10,000? This time 15,000 was asked. Can you kindly transfer 15,000? This is how they will ask you the money, okay? And then feeling pity, they will send, okay? Short, long story short. And this is from DC. DC parent. Okay, this is the, actually when we went to Perrin, this was happening there. Okay, so what was happening was just like you are receiving messages from your director. Okay, see, I can create a fake profile of your director. Can I? Yes or no? Yes, and then I can start sending messages to all of you also. Okay, and of course, I may not ask money from you, okay, since you are a student, but... Uh, there may be something else also. I can target you also, okay? But especially for working people, normally money is being asked, okay? So the director, what he will do is, he will, uh, I'll make a fake profile of the director, chat with all the employees, okay? And saying that in order to do this or that, or saying that, okay, right now I'm in the US, right? He can, we can also say like that. I will come to know that when he leaves for US or when he goes somewhere else, outside this place. And then when he go from here, let's say he goes to Guwahati, very simple, short one, okay? He is not going to go for just like that. He is going to go there for some meeting. And even I will know that from what time to what time his meeting will be. Because during the meeting, he wouldn't be able to receive phone calls, right? Normally, he will keep all his phones in uh, silent mode. So during that time, I will start my attack. I'll start sending messages to all the faculties, the lecturers out here saying that, okay, I have met with an accident. This is this, this is this, emergency, please send money to these people. Some people out of, you know, 50, 60, 100, at least two or three people are going to send the money. I'm no, I know that, okay? But what I want to share today is, we should always see the message, the information, okay? Not the person, okay? And until and unless you have a conversation with that person, don't transfer money to anybody, all right? One thing, keep the privacy settings as my friends only for all of you. Okay, mm, all right. 
All right, all right. Okay, see here, I told you that I will be able to create a fake profile of anybody, right? Now in Mugok Chung, one of the students created a fake profile of the teacher. Okay, and he started acting like the teacher. And what he did was, he started going around in the Facebook, giving bad, bad comments here and there, posting, you know, obscene images and videos. Okay, so what happened was, he, the teacher's friend started calling the teacher, saying that, Are, what are you doing, right? Why are you posting such things on the web? Why are you doing this? Then the teacher didn't know that, okay, didn't know that such thing was going on. Then that time only they came to realize that, okay, someone is doing this under my name, okay? But for some moment of time, the teacher's reputation was at hold, right? Because many people thought that it was the teacher. But likewise, what we have to do in that kind of situation is, you please go to the police station, okay? File an FIR, okay? File an FIR, and then in that Mogokchung case, you know what? No matter wh how you create the, you know, profile, uh, sorry, the account from where you create, from which mobile phone, and from which internet connection you create, the police will come and catch you, okay? These days, I think the police have that much technology. Okay, they will come and catch you. So don't even think of, you know, trying to do something like that. Okay, so creating a fake account of somebody and, you know, trying to harm that. Jealousy is there, right? We can, we'll try to harm that person. So don't do that because if an FIR is, you know, registered, then the police will definitely come and catch you, no matter where you are. Okay, so different, different, uh, Sections of the law is there. Okay, so here I just want to share last one thing. Here, https cybercrime.gov.in. For example, if you don't want to go to the police station, okay, you can always file your case here and you can do it anonymously also. Okay, you don't have to reveal yourself. Okay, all right, and then you can do it here also. So many of the times, what happens here is uh, okay, in the end, just one more. There are times that if boys, okay, boys, you'll get video calls. Okay, so when you open those video calls, normally uh, porn will be there. Okay, so normally porn will be there. Even for girls also, if you get a video call from unknown numbers and if you open it, porn will be there. Now, what happens during video call is uh, both your face is captured. Okay? Because when you are chatting through video calls, even your face is captured, right? So what these people are doing is, actually this is called sextortion, okay? They will try to blackmail you, saying that, we'll say that you have been involved in these, these, these activities, and then we are going to uh, post it and make it viral, okay? And they will try to uh, extort money from you. This case uh, happened at Kefri, okay? One of the participants showed me those videos also. So in that case, what you have to do is, can you go to the nearest police station, file the complaint? Or take a screenshot of it, okay? Take a screenshot of it, and then file through the cybercrime.gov.in. This is what you can do, okay? Because once you become, you know, once you accept their demand, then the next victim will be just nearby only, okay? You should not consider that because you have not done anything wrong, okay? And the police knows, the, the law enforcing agency knows that these things are happening. So it's not like that they are not going to believe you. They will believe you because this will not be their first case. So what people, uh, what normally happens is people think that, ah, what if they think something else? What if I'm really involved? What if the police thinks that I'm this type of girl or this type of guy? Nah, this comes to the mind and then we just say, ah, just leave it. We used to live like that. Don't do that. Because if you approach the police, then the police will be more than willing to help you. Okay. So that's all from my side. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay. Uh, now we will have a small workshop. Okay. A demonstration. Okay. Sir Atushi is there. So I give time to him now.
Okay, uh, a lot of things have been uh, said and a lot of things have been heard. Uh, in this session, uh, let's uh, take a look at how uh, cyber criminals uh, out there on the internet are looking for a prey that is a uh, uh, common people like us to uh, compromise them, right? Uh, we have uh, heard about phishing, we have heard about uh, th that is the importance of uh, using a genuine software, right? So uh, let's uh, have a look at uh, what uh, that is, uh, there is a possibility, right? Uh, there is a chance, right? We used to say to the people that uh, you have to download uh, application programs from an original source, right? or from the genuine source, right? Because uh, when you download uh, those application from third uh, party software or distributor, then there is a chances that those uh, software can be uh, repacked, right? Repacked, right? Uh, it's uh, easy, right? Because there are tools out there. You can download some APK, right? put some backdoors into that, put that together, share it to someone else. Someone thinks that that's, an, uh, uh, that's a game, right? So uh, every time uh, the, the, that is the victim is uh, playing the game, he is open or she, is, she can open up uh, a backdoor, okay? For an act attacker to spy on, right? So uh, I have uh, set up uh, this one that is, uh, this is my Windows uh, 7 box, right? I have a Windows 7 box over here. I have a Linux machine over here, okay? Uh, so uh, let's uh, try to differentiate between this uh, Linux and the Windows, okay? Linux is going to be um, a taker machine, right? And then the Windows is going to be a victim machine, okay? So. I have uh, here a Linux machine set up uh, listening for any incoming activities, okay? Incoming connection from the internet into my PC, right? Now, in this uh, Windows, right? That is uh, the victim system. I have a program called a PuTTY, right? PuTTY is uh, a very small software which is uh, used as an SSH client, right? So if uh, you have an SSH uh, syst uh, system or server enabled into your, uh, a system somewhere, using this PuTTY, you can connect into that system, right? So uh, this PuTTY have been already repacked, okay? Uh, I, I just uh, repacked this one last night for uh, demonstration purposes, right? So whenever I run this PuTTY, right? This is an interface of a PuTTY that is used to connect uh, the system remotely using SSH, right? What I can do in this client is I can simply type an IP address over here, okay? So the PuTTY program is now running, right? If we come back over here, right, we have here a meterpreter shell, right? Meterpreter shell is uh, this one, uh, Metasploit Exploitation Framework. Uh, which is uh, used for uh, exploitation purposes and then bad guys over there, uh, most of them uh, make use of this, right? So as soon as uh, we have got here a metal printer shell, that means we already have a connection into this system, okay? So if I do something like this, I have uh, so many features in this uh, uh, meter printer shell where I can even uh, record a microphones, right? Record a microphone, records, uh, record uh, this one. Uh, the webcam, I can even make use of uh, this, uh, like a setup, a key, uh, a key logger over here, right? Something that uh, which I want to show is. Uh, screen share over here, okay? Uh, it's a screen share. If I can do something, I can share, sh say something like a,
All right. So uh, this is my Linux box. I have got uh, that is uh, Windows 7, which is over here. All right. This is my Windows. Uh, that is the existing. That is uh, now my. That this is the screen of my Windows 7. Right. If I go back to this my Linux, I have that screen over same screen over here. Whatever activity that is uh, once you have been compromised with uh, this such kind of uh, softwares or application, right? Which have a backdoor in it, right? Uh, you can be monitored, right? I do some activities here. I can see that over here. Okay. So uh, let me try to play one uh, videos here if there is any. Right. Okay, so I'm playing uh, these videos in Windows 7, right? If I comes over to this uh, Linux box, that is my Etagra machine, I can see that the uh, same videos which is which uh, the victim is viewing in my uh, Etagra box, right? This is how uh, that is uh, the danger or the threat that uh, which uh, we can get into. into if we download uh, applications or softwares from uh, this one, unverified uh, sites, okay, or un unverified repository. Uh, another thing that which uh, I want to show over here is uh, Uh, this is called a Stormbreaker. A Stormbreaker is a framework for mobile exploitation. Okay, uh, and this uh, particular is uh, used uh, for phishing as well, right? Uh, it will send you uh, and it will send uh, you out a link, and once you click that link, uh, your system will get compromised, right? So uh, I can craft uh, the message, right, In, to make it very interesting, right? If someone sitting next to you have uh, a brother or sister and is sending you a link, which is crafted in such a way that my brother or sister is contesting this, this in this event, he needs your like, right? Vote in, uh, uh, on this one uh, social media platform to get uh, uh, that is uh, the more the vote that is uh, the more like he get or she gets the more uh, this one. So if uh, a friend like you craft that message and send it to you, then obviously. Uh, some people uh, is going to fall for that, right? Because it comes from someone you know, right? So uh, like uh, Sir Daniel was uh, discussing uh, a bit earlier, it is very easy to crack, uh, create a fake account, right? So uh, Okay, so uh, uh, I have a, uh, like a, a desire to show you another two demonstration, uh, like uh, which is something related to phishing and something that is which is related to backdooring of uh, a mobile application. But uh, as of now, it looks like this uh, server is down, so I will limit my session uh, till uh, what, I, what that is uh, till this. So. Uh, Once again, a reminder to all of you, right? Whenever you use an application, right? Use a genuine source. Uh, if I say that I'm a genuine source, like a not a crack the version use crack, that's illegal, right? But if I say that you are, you don't care about the consequences, right? If I say that if you do that, you are killing hardworking people, right? You are killing those organizations which are investing millions to create that particular software that you will not care. But if I say like, there's a chance that uh, th those applications can be backdoored, like uh, the example which I have shown you over here between Windows uh, 7 and then uh, Linux boss, then I, f I think that uh, that will make some sense to you, uh, to you guys, right? So always be careful, always uh, download uh, from a genuine source and then use a genuine software, okay? And then also encourage the developers, okay, uh, to uh, make uh, this uh, cyberspace a safer space. Okay, thank you, everyone.
very good afternoon to one and all who's present here. Uh, as we come closer to the awareness program on cybersecurity, on behalf of BCA department, I would uh, have the privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this program. First of all, I would like to thank our respected director, that's Kolol Lorin, who has given us a wonderful speech and then uh, like honored this function and then giving us a glimpse of knowledge, which is a transition from 90s to 20s in this technology. And next, I extend my heartfelt thanks to our Daniel Marin, the additional director, Nelit Kohima, for his wonderful speech. It's my pleasure to thank the resource person, Mori Manba Amir, Joint Director, Scientist D, Nelit Kohima, for enlightening us uh, with the claims of cybersecurity. And I would like to thank the speaker, Atoshe Lohe, Forensic Analyst, Nelit Kohima, who has done the live demo regarding with cybersecurity and awareness. Last but not the least, I would like to thank the moderator, Tali Nusang, Haichodi BCA Department, for organizing this awareness program, which is very useful and uh, very, like, the training topic. And I would like to thank all the students who are present here and making this awareness program a grand success. Thank you. Uh, anything related to social media accounts that you come, came across? Any, maybe your friends, right? Anything that you have come across? He already hacked mine just a while ago, but network was not good. All right, so uh, especially now most of the students are computer science students here. Be careful while browsing crack games, especially the guys while downloading the games. Right, be careful. He, he has already, he scanned the network and he already hacked mine, right? Uh, it's, he already did half without my knowledge. He accessed my camera, right? He did it. <clears throat> so it's possible to hack anyone's account easily only if you are not be aware of it, all right? So uh, be careful, especially when you guys are downloading softwares or games, antivirus from unknown s websites, all right? So just be careful with that. If there is no question, then I think we will wind up our session here. Thank you so much, everyone.